Driving Culture Board, this is High Beast Radio. I'm your host, Madrell Cinney, here with my co-host, Kevin Wong. What's up, guys? And we're here with Chris Gibbs of Union. Chris, how's Peace it going? everybody. I'm chilling. Happy to be in Miami. Yeah, I appreciate you a little sun. And for the people tuning in, we're here at Social Studies here in Miami. How's it been? It's been great. Uh, we wanted to inject some youth and culture into uh, the design district, and I think uh, mission accomplished. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, like, you know, for the people that aren't aware of social studies, can you just describe the concept behind it? They might not be aware of it because it's so damn new. Yeah. Uh, this is a concept that Angelo Bacche, along with Shaniqua Jarvis, uh, put together. Uh, and they had me come in and help, I'll say. Mm -hmm. I'm an assistant. Yeah. Um, and it's uh, basically uh, getting together a group of, like, uh, friends, good brands, culture, like-minded uh, cultural brands, and we put together a little pop-up slash um, there's some workshops going on as yeah. well. Um, and just an activation, trying to like just uh, dig a little bit deeper than just hear some shit come by it. Yeah. You know? And would and you say, you know, is it geared for the youth? Are you guys thinking about, yeah, you know? Yeah, for sure. This is something like, you know, it's definitely geared to a younger person. That's not to say an older person can't come and shop here. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we thought about it from a price point sensibility first and foremost. Yeah. And then just like we wanted, we are, we're always trying to teach like the broader spectrum of what streetwear, or I'm always trying to teach yeah. the yeah. broader spectrum of what streetwear can be. Yeah. If you want it to be what yeah. we were able to do. Yeah. But we were very fortunate and blessed to be able to do and figure out and we want other people and young people specifically to know that they can kind of make something new out of uh, yeah. streetwear. And being in you know the retail game for as long as you have do you see like you know this being the future for what pop-up spaces could be like the potential for it? Yeah I mean I think you know I like the fact and I hope that we you know as we do and others will continue to do something beyond just selling right yeah. so the pop-up it's not a new scenario it's not yeah. a new thing but it's largely been just to sell yeah. so i like that we've got some activations we've got the workshop where people can make and print t-shirts mm -hmm. we're doing a tie-dye workshop tomorrow which is going to be fun and it's a way that people can learn to kind of diy i yeah. came up in a very diy scenario it's now blown up and worldwide and yeah. people are paying 400 billion dollars for brands and shit yeah. but it's still we still everything still kind of is run through a DIY sensibility. Yeah. And I think that's good because inevitably you have control and you get to do it. Yeah. And not to sound all PSA, but like anyone can do it if you yeah. have a good idea and you have the right drive and yeah. a little yeah. bit of luck too, you know? Yeah. Do, you, do you think it kind of, you know, these kind of pop-ups and these kind of activations in a way is kind of a response to just how accessible, you know, fashion and streetwear and yeah. culture is now, you know, on the internet and on social media and all that? I think it's like, is it, a is it a response? Yes, in that it is very accessible online, and that's great, mm -hmm. and there are certain parts that are well served. Yeah. But then it's still a tangible thing. Right. Yeah. You still want to touch it. You still got to feel it. Like, you know, um, you know, we carry RAF at the store, and it's mm -hmm. hung next to maybe some streetwear stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a, one of the, a common response we'll get is like a maybe younger kid who's liked a shitload of RAF online, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, who's on his Instagram or on right. his Facebook, he's liked that shit. Yeah. He might take pictures from their, yeah. you know, lookbooks and put it on his shit or her yeah. shit and be like, yo, I'm down. I know about RAF, but right. they don't own it. Yeah. And that's not mm. to say they have to own it, right? But they don't, but they'll come in and be like, oh, shit. They'll touch yeah. it and they'll be like, wow, I've never, I've seen it. I like yeah. the styling. They, they tell a great story, but right. I've never touched this garment to know, wow, the fabric is incredible or just the way it's been put together. Mm -hmm. And they get another understanding of, okay, now I understand like kind of the work that's gone into yeah. this beyond yeah. like a great photo shoot. Right. And maybe what I have to do to, if, if I want it or if I want something like that, what it's going to take to maybe make it, find some really dope fabrics or, yeah. you know, learn more about construction, it opens up a whole new world, yeah. you know, and you're not getting that online. Yeah. It's still, yeah. at the end of the day, it's a personal thing. Yeah. So, yes, the pop-up is us trying to engage and make sure people know yeah. it's still personal. And is it kind of, you know, something of a, a pride that you take that, you're bringing this kind of analog, this tangible thing, just like your retail shop, you know, because there's so much e-commerce now and you're still really yeah. strong in the game just, you know, with the boutique. Yeah, yeah, you know what? Like, I was gonna say no until you went like retail, you know, like pop-up. Yeah, I'm not proud yeah. per se of the pop-up. I mean, I'm happy to take part of it, but like one of the things I definitely do take pride in is like, yo, 
We are a real store. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have a rich dad or rich mom. Right. Yeah. Right. We're not a vanity project like a lot of stores that we have to compete against where like they don't have to make money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they can look cute or yeah, awesome yeah, yeah. or, you know, yeah. architecture. We're a real store. You come in, but it's, I feel like, and I hope that when a customer comes to our store, they're getting a real organic. Yeah. Yeah like experience mm -hmm. i i would like to hope that we've been successful because that's there because yeah. that's happening from me to my staff mm -hmm. to the brands we carry it's real yeah. and yeah. in this world of a lot of not real shit right, fantasy right. yeah i like that we're real so yeah that's definitely something i'm proud of and i try to work hard at yeah, yeah. and i mean you know in, in the world of like you know temporary stores and stuff like that like you mentioned they're just here and they're gone but like what you guys are doing here with social studies you actually are building like a community do you think like you know um, it's important for like all brands or like all stores when they're thinking about doing these temporary concepts to inject some sort of like thing that's going to last beyond the three days or the or the limited edition clothing there mm -hmm. yeah I mean that's I uh, that's the ideal scenario you know we'd like to have left our mark a positive one you mm -hmm. know something that can be built upon hopefully we've inspired this community or some person in this community to you know do something similar or invite us back to do something bigger or yeah. different so yeah for sure we want to make our mark it's very important yeah and you know going back a bit to you know kind of when you started with union in la and you were bringing a lot of japanese brands yeah. over you use a lot of exploration for people yeah, walking I mean, in and being sure. like yeah. this is new and even that with the japanese they don't want to sell to you unless yeah. they know you. So right. you have to go, like we still, and, and that is a living thing. So yeah. still yeah. to this day, we go to Japan four times a year to make our buy. And yeah. everyone who I'm buying from is a friend, is a right. legitimate yeah. friend. That's why we've had those brands for over 15 years. Yeah, yeah. I like, I mean, I'm not going to be shy. Like I really like the Japanese way of doing business mm -hmm. and I'm really inspired by what they did. That's what I tried to bring over. That's what really inspired me. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, oh wow. Yeah. Like, you go to Japan and you've, they, their t-shirt lines have stores where it's presented on marble with right, brass right, fixings. Right. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, now that's become normal. Now yeah, yeah, you go yeah. to any streetwear store here, and that's all from there. Right. Man. And that's, yeah. that's what I was, oh, wow, this has been put on a pedestal. This yeah. thing that was like, I just thought was like, well, we can only be in this one spot, which yeah. is like back of the bus type, type of thing. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. it's t-shirts, hats and sneakers. Like, and now it's been this elevated thing. And I definitely can't understate the Japanese influence on that, at least yeah. to me. Yeah. And I, I, and, and I, you know, so yeah. Yeah. And now, you know, kind of going back to what we were saying about there being social media and there being internet and people kind of knowing these brands before they walk into your store. Yeah. You know, how does that kind of change for your perspective or direction to maybe the, the brands that you bring in year to mm, year yeah. or the way that you present them? Yeah. Or just, it's a, is there, it's you know, a challenge. Difficult? I'll be honest, like uh, traditionally and historically, um, you know, Union was a place where whatever we brought in people were like oh they they said it was dope we believe them we're gonna buy it we're yeah. gonna support it nowadays it's flipped yeah mm -hmm. and it's like oh whatever the world says we have to go find true that's in theory yeah. and that's also happening in reality yeah. yeah but i definitely like i'm stubborn and i'm always trying to find this next new thing and yeah, i fail yeah, sometimes yeah. and bring in some shit that nobody likes and right. we have to stop selling it yeah. and sometimes like you know the guys i'm doing um the tie-dye workshop with tomorrow like the online ceramics guys like we brought that in yeah yeah they're not big no, yeah. no one knows about yeah. them no yeah. one's wearing no celebrities wearing them on the internet or at least it wasn't when when uh you know actually a good friend of mine adam from stussy introduced me to those guys um and we brought it in and people just again oh wow this yeah. is dope yeah, yeah. they're you know, we sold it really well in right. store. So yeah. that's a success story. And then something we can build on. Yeah. Some, it doesn't always happen that way. There's yeah. tons of failures too. Um, we take risks. Sometimes when I look at my bank account, that's not great, but <laughs> we've been very blessed to even be able to take risks. And yeah. I really yeah. appreciate all of our customers yeah. who support us enough where we can do that. And yeah. still, yeah, we're going to get the easy no brainer yeah. stuff, you know, but. Yeah. How do you so, translate that passion to like, you know, the customer? Like when they come in, like how, how do you like, just talking to them just yeah. being again uh, sorry it's a boring answer but just keeping it real talking to them mm -hmm. figuring out uh, and we're uh, like i'm genuinely a people person and i'm yeah. generally interested in learning and about new and interesting people i learn just as much when they walk into the store again yeah. i'm not in the store as much as i used to be which right. you know but i enjoy engaging and oh wow you're mm -hmm. from ecuador or yeah. wherever and this is what you're into like yeah. you know like, yeah yeah 
Yeah, I think I think like you know in LA it might just be like you know given the weather or maybe it even is like you know the street culture there but like when people come to the stores they, they converse more with like you know the people that are, that work there in the shops yeah. or there's like you know people outside just sitting around they're like yeah. you know and they talk there too why do you think that is well i'll a disagree a little bit i mean okay. my two points of comparison would be new york and la that's yeah. the place mm -hmm. i've worked retail and i don't think any place is less social when, once you get into the store. Yeah. yeah. Now with LA, the different look with New York, it's very casual and almost organic. Yeah. Right. It's some oh I just yeah. walk in and happen to be in the I drop by and you yeah. just start yeah, talking yeah. shit about whatever. Right. And the, and it's very easy because everybody yeah. gets around. LA, it's not as easy to get around. So once someone gets out of the house and yeah, gets to there. your store, they're there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah they yeah. probably drove for an hour in traffic and yeah, they want to engage. I don't think it's less or more, mm -hmm. but it's definitely maybe more concentrated because that someone has made an extra effort to get to your store. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, and also, you know, as hype beasts, you know, we always speak about this this term of culture, you know, and I think mm -hmm. I think I, I was listening to your panel at you know at ComplexCon as well, and you you guys are talking about culture and how it's you know right now it's kind of at this point where it's all these different people from different countries are able to kind of commune yeah. especially you know art basil here we see that you yeah, know yeah. even at the party yesterday we saw mm -hmm. you know people from Jap japan people from yeah, all these yeah. places exactly. you know how do you feel about that now being able to actually constantly be amongst these people from different countries within this same streetwear you know realm i mean i think it's awesome uh, you know we have brands from everywhere now last for complex con last year we brought in uh, these guys from Indonesia, and that that sold. Really, that's another one I never heard. I even like one of my staff put me onto them, and yeah, yeah. it was the number one selling product we have, you know. Yeah. And then I later, cool. yeah, yeah, not specifically through them, but got to go to Bali and had like an incredible time. And yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I I know for me, and this is another thing I try to like. I tell my kids, I tell my interns, I tell my staff, like, yeah. yo, a whole new world was open to me when I got to travel. And I already yeah. got to travel a lot as a kid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm from Canada originally. My dad's from Barbados. Yeah. And yeah. then his family's from uh, all kind of emigrated to New York. Mm -hmm. So we, I went to New York a lot as a kid, which was really dope. Mm -hmm. And then Barbados. So I got to travel a lot already. But then when I went to Europe and Japan, Japan it was just like mind blowing, right. you yeah. know? So just to see... You know, I, and this is going to sound crazy, and I'm, I probably am crazy, but it, it like it. Rem I always think it's like Star Trek. It's like, yeah. wow, there's a whole group of people that do shit a totally different way. Yeah. yeah. And with the internet and traveling, now it's all kind of it's there. Yeah. yeah. You know, some of it's eroding because I think people are like losing their own personalities a little oh, yeah, bit. Yeah, but yeah. it's some of it's still there, and it's dope to like, just see a different world and a different way yeah. of doing things. I don't know. I just like. Uh, I think the spice of life. Yeah. How is it to see just how much cult like street culture has grown since like you know your first that introduction is, to it? Yeah, that is nothing short of like awesome, in like the literal sense of like you know I'm I'm in awe of just how big streetwear has become. I'm psyched. I'm happy. I never thought it would be as big as it is. Yeah. I hope we can find a way to keep it real. Yeah. Because that's the yeah. life cycle of stuff like this. Yeah. You know, when you get so big, it ends up kind of burning out. Yeah. And I'm definitely like a big fan of streetwear and I want yeah. it to stay. Yeah, I feel like I there is to... kind of a legitimate, you know, worry from some people where yeah, it's like, yeah. where is you it know, going? I've only you know? really yeah. started to think about that this year. It's been posed to me a couple times. And earlier on in the year, I was like, oh, no, you guys are crazy. Yeah. And then like, as the year is kind of unfolded, yeah. I'm more and more like, yo, man, I, I am maybe a little concerned. So yeah. we'll see. I mean, one thing we saw, you know, we went to this kind of Barney's pop-up where it was just yeah. all the, you know, streetwear brands that okay. were kind of popping up. And, and in this luxury store. Yeah. In this luxury yeah. store. And to us, you know, we didn't really think much about it, but on, in reflection, we were like, man, this is kind of, you know, this is crazy. We're, they're at the, the best levels of, yeah, yeah. of yeah. the, you know, yeah. a department store yeah. that's, in, you know, I mean, in, in you, prior you, times, you can't You do don't it. have to go any further than the yeah. Louis yeah. Supreme collab. Yeah. I mean, yeah. done. Yeah. You know? Or go and walk it. Hey, we're... There's Gucci. Walk yeah, in there. Right. Tell me that that doesn't look like streetwear. Yeah. You know. So yeah, it's crazy, but it's a dope crazy, and even if it explodes, kind of see how it goes. Thing. Uh, I'm sure. Again, my bank account won't, <laughs> but that it, it'll explode and it'll produce yeah. a new thing. Uh, yeah. You know, I there's a whole other conversation to be had, which yeah. I don't think we have time for. Yeah. But I think you know, streetwear was born out of urban. Right. And yeah, urban yeah. exploded. Yeah. And I think streetwear 
is a really dope thing. It's what I've made my life life hood on, you know? Yeah. So if if streetwear does explode or implode or whatever, yeah. a new thing will happen. Yeah, true. I don't know what that is. If I did, I'd I wouldn't even be rich because yeah. it takes so long for that thing to develop to the point where you can be rich yeah. and you've got to really commit to, you know, but like, you know, yeah, like, you know, streetwear to me grew out of urban yeah. and urban is not really a relevant, um, like stream of income or like, you know, or even right. just a fashion thing right now. And yeah. Yeah. Hopefully streetwear can diversify enough and and yeah and grow but yeah yeah and now you know we think of you as you know one of the ogs of streetwear and whatnot you know and how many years in the game have you been in it now yeah i started working at union in 96 yeah so wow. yeah 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 <laughs> we calculate okay, okay yeah okay <laughs> yeah is it surreal almost at times to like see like you know these luxury stores learning or taking like you know just just principles or, or, or strategies that you guys have done like stores like Union and then applying it to them as well because like for instance like Kevin said like a lot of these luxury stores never used to carry street yeah. labels and like you it know. is it is I, know, I I see what they're doing I see that they're taking direct hints from us yeah and yeah it's definitely like wow I can't believe like it is kind of like wow I can't believe that I can't believe they're looking at us yeah and 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 I'm but at the same time I'm not like why are they? I get right. it because yeah. what they're doing ain't working and yeah, what we're yeah, doing yeah. is. True. Yeah. So, and I never thought that, and I'm not saying me personally, but our culture, yeah. Yeah. streetwear, as it would be the leaders no, definitely in not, marketing man. and branding yeah. and yeah. product yeah. Pr production. And it's crazy. I never thought that. I yeah. just really didn't. Yeah. So, yeah, I still don't believe it. Yeah. I think for um, like this probably like within the past three years or a few years and so like this might be the most pivotal moment for street culture where they're controlling the narrative in fashion. Yeah. Like is that is that does that make you nervous to say like oh wow these luxury stores are looking at us to like lead the way and it's like and, and maybe like you're still trying to figure things out or you might not know what that next way is. Um, I've uh, I've never been I've never. I guess taking myself too seriously. Yeah. I I, res I understand that certain people look to me as a leader in, in whatever they w they would, and I accept that and try and I just try and be my best self. Yeah. And do what I think is right and what I yeah. believe in, and I don't get caught up in like, well, who do I have to like, kind of, live up to. Yeah. I yeah. I don't. I'm not never worried about that. Yeah. And the way we usually kind of try to wrap things up, you know, is. You know, back in '96, if you could, if you could say something to yourself now, you know, or uh, back then, uh, some advice or anything like that, you know, what, what would that be? Ah, uh, damn, advice. Uh, <laughs> uh, if I could tell, oh, because I, I'm from Canada. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I'm, I lived in New York for eight years. I lived in LA for now 14. Yeah. Um, I've traveled all over the world. Yeah. And I remember. Me, one of my teachers when I was in middle school was this like 20 something year old guy who had already lived in London, New York and Paris. Wow. And I remember being like, wow, yeah. Yeah. this like, I want to be that guy. Yeah. Yeah. And fuck, I mean, it I've done it, it, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know? Through, via streetwear. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> through streetwear. Yeah. Cool bro, appreciate you yeah, man. Thank yeah, you yeah, guys, thanks, man. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. All right, yeah, appreciate it. All right.